welcome Zion Global family and friends. Uh, we are so thankful that you would tune in again. Um, this is what we'll call it episode number four in our series uh, as we are sharing uh, with the congregation and anybody who tunes in information that I think is really, really worthwhile. And tonight you're going to hear some information that I think everybody needs to know. Uh, maybe some people already know, um, but I know if you're in, interested in buying property, uh, buying a house, selling a house, um, financing a house, and preparing to buy a house, uh, all of those things are some of the pieces that we're gonna share, we're gonna talk about as we talk with our sister here, Anita Clayton. So tonight, uh, I want you to just tune in, tell somebody that we're on the air, Please share on Facebook, share on YouTube, let somebody know uh, that this information, of course it'll be there, uh, will be really worth your while, worth your time. So we're blessed to have you. We're thankful that mm -hmm. you would join us this evening um, and that you would spend some time with us and give us some information that I really believe is gonna be worthwhile. Uh, you know, people buy houses uh, or attempt to buy houses and they run into this area where they're just like, oh, man, I don't even know what I'm doing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so before we dive into that, I want people to know a little bit about you. Okay. Uh, just share, you know, background, a little bit of background on yourself, and then we'll go into a few questions. Sounds like a plan. I just want to say thank you so much for having me. God I mean, bless. It's a real yeah. privilege to do this, and especially... And, and we might struggle a little bit because, you know, we kind of both crazy a little bit. Um, so, you know, it's a good crazy. we'll just do what we do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Well, at least we admit, admit we're crazy. I'm I mean, willing, you know, other I'm people, willing. Hey, that's know. okay, that's all right. But anyway, a little bit about me. Um, I am originally from Alabama. Alabama. Um, grew up in Tuskegee, had a farm, was on a farm and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, and always wanted to go uh, to architecture school, which I did. I, I got a, a bachelor's in architecture and a master's in architecture. So I also always wanted my own real estate license because I thought the two would be a good marriage. Yeah. Um, a lot of people don't understand the workings of a house. And um, a lot of times I can see things that maybe some other realtors can't see. So mm. I'm not the one that's gonna be stuck in a, you know, just being in an office all the time. So this is kind of like the best of two worlds. Mm. So I've been doing real estate for ooh, 28 years. All right. And um, architecture longer than that. We won't talk about age. <clears throat> but anyway, it's okay. that's, yeah, hey, 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 I'm glad, I'm it's glad okay. to be here. Amen. I'm glad to be here. You know what I mean? It's glad to be seen and not viewed. That's right. So at least not for right now. So I'll see Jesus some other time. He understands. <laughs> <laughs> he understands. Yeah, he understands we'll get there, right? Yeah. So that's really, I'm married to Greg and I've got a son who's in the military. He's a warrant officer three and um, got grandkids and there you go. Go. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well, our intent behind tonight is to talk about this real estate piece, mm. you know, and we have already said uh, our people perish for lack of knowledge. I know we're going to touch that. Sure. Um, but this is a forum that we're having that that pastor has allowed us to use to share information mm -hmm. uh, again, share with our congregation and for those at large. And um, so I really want to kind of we're going to take the you know, take the tape down and, <laughs> and I'll get behind the curtain a little bit. Mm. And, you know, from a person who is just looking at the beginning process. Yes. Just don't know nothing from nothing. Right. But they're wanting to get into uh, buying a house. Look at what's the process of buying sure. a house. I know a lot of young people, but there's older people as well who are, you know, maybe have never bought a house before. And yeah. I've run into that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some people that you think, you know, in their 50s, 60s, and they say, you know what, I'm tired of just giving this money away to uh, a landlord, and I'm not able to write off any of the stuff on my taxes. And I will say, there are certain things that I am not. Yes, 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 yes. She <laughs> even told me there, there are some things that she's not. Let's I'm not, see. I'm not. She's, uh, <clears throat> she's not an attorney. Thank you. Uh, she's not a licensed appraiser. Mm -hmm. She's not a loan officer, and she's not an engineer or a tax expert Thank you. or a financial planner. Financial planner was last week, so yeah. tune into last week, and right. and, we'll, and we'll bring him back again, and we'll talk to yeah, him. Yeah, that's a, a disclosure. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't want anybody to think that I'm, that I'm doing this. Well, let's talk about buying a house. Yeah. One thing I will tell people is that 
When you start the process of buying a house, you put a lot of people to work. Mm. So you can't have to be serious about what you're doing. Um, and there are things that you need to do to get prepared. And one of the things you think like, okay, well, I'll just go get a loan. Well, you're gonna need money before mm. you even get that loan. You have to kind of collect some money um, beforehand. And you say, well, why do I have to do that? Well, this is the reason why. You're gonna have to pay for appraisals outside of the closing. You're gonna have to pay for um, whole house inspections, you're going to, ha or if you have other inspections on like radon or, or lead pay base paint or anything like that, you got to have a down payment. So you got a plan mm -hmm. to have that money. You just can't be jumping off and say, oh, I'm going to buy a house and you got $2 in the bank. Oops, sorry, that's not going to work. So there's some ways to find money. And I know we were talking about this, we were, uh, we were talking about scr uh, scriptures about stuff, but I'm gonna go through both the process of how to buy a house and how to sell a house. Mm -hmm. So here are the things you need to do. First of all, you need to have a consultation with your realtor. Mm -hmm. Okay, the reason why we can go through these steps with you, also we can tell you what to expect. Mm -hmm. What has to happen first, second, third, you know, all of these things. And there's no such thing as a dumb question. Because if you don't know, you don't know. Exactly. You've never done it, yeah. you've never done it. So we're there to kind of guide you through the process. I know a lot of people say, oh, it's such a hassle trying to buy a house. I won't want to buy it. Well, here's the thing. I, for me, I would rather buy a house every day than buy a car mm. <laughs> once a year. Okay, because the process is a little different. Uh, these things are set by standards that uh, we realtors have to go by, ethical standards, and we go by a code of ethics. So we have to deal with people in a certain way because it's a legal document. I mean, we can lose our licenses, all sorts of things can happen. So you want to have that buyer consultation with your agent. The second thing you need to do is you need to get pre-approved. Mm -hmm especially in this market. This market is so fast. There's so few houses on the market that every good house is just being bid on by several people. Yeah. You can't come in and say, well, I'll get my you know, pre-approval letter. No, you know, later, I'll do that later. No, you have to have it even when you just give the offer. Yeah. So, and you need to know, it's just like you go into the grocery store. You don't go into the grocery store and say, hmm, I think I'll buy steak or will I buy bologna? It's still meat. Okay, you can buy whatever you can afford, but you need to know if your budget is going to uh, support your, your wants and your needs. So that's why you need to do that. So and just real quick. Yes, sir. In this area of this market, just, just, just a little bit more there. Yes. Um, because I know for those who are not in, in the market yet, Mm. Um, it's hard to understand, you know, what, what am I looking at? You know, if I'm, if I'm looking at a house and, you know, before it was, and you might get to this, mm -hmm. it was a hundred thousand dollars, you know, five, 10 years ago, and now it's $300,000. Mm. Um, you know, what has happened? What's, what's this, do you know what's going on in the market? Yes. Yes. Uh, a lot of things have happened mm. when we had the big recession. Builders went out of business. Mm. Uh, they stopped building because they couldn't get financing. Okay. The other thing that happened is there was a glut of uh, real estate on the market. So a lot of investors bought up those houses okay. as well. Now, fast forward, things have changed. We've had immigration, people are still having babies, and you know, those babies grew up. And the biggest segment of the people who are buying right now are millennials. Okay. The people who have the houses baby are boomers. baby boomers. Mm. And what do we want? Show us the money. Okay, so, but it's a, a, a clear thing of uh, supply and demand. Okay. So as the housing market, they weren't building as much and you know, it got smaller and smaller and smaller, mm -hmm. but you got this glut of people coming along that want, so the few houses that are there are going up in price. Got it. So that's the reason why we have this situation. Got it, okay. Mm -hmm. So the consultation is even oh, more well, so. Yeah. And we will tell you, you know, don't go in half step and I'm sorry, this is not the day. Uh, you know, I, I feel sorry sometimes for buyers mm -hmm. because it is difficult. It is kind of difficult right now, but, the good thing about it is 
right now the interest rates, even if they go up a little bit, it's still not as bad as it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when, we, when Greg and I bought our first house, I can't even remember, I think we had a, we had one of those variable rates and it would go up to a certain cap mm -hmm. and we had already calculated that we could stand the cap. Okay. Okay, but it was still like, I don't know, I think it was maybe 12%. So it's like buying a house on a credit card. You know, by the time we left, we only owned like, you know, a couple of tiles in the bathroom, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it was, it was difficult. Right. But right now, at least the interest rates are good. Mm -hmm. You know, but you need to plan on being in that house for a little while and don't get caught up in it and overbid, but you know, getting ahead of myself. But anyway, then we start searching for a home. One thing that I do is I set my clients up on an automatic um, alert where as soon as something goes on the market it goes straight to your email okay and then you can go oh, wait a minute do I like that one Interesting. okay yeah. yeah so going out to all these other sites I mean you can there are a ton of them out there but the problem comes in it takes maybe uh, 24 hours for them to feed that information mm -hmm. so you might list, uh, lose out on it and I have seen like back in hmm, March, April, May, houses stayed on the market for just hours. Oh, yeah. Hours. Yeah. So you have to be there. So anyway, um, let's just say you, you found the home you want. We take a look at it, and you say, oh, this is it, and you get an accepted offer. There are things that go into place after that. There are time limitations. You can't just dawdle. This is a legal binding contract, and you must do those things within that time frame okay. so um, and then you have your home inspection once you have your home inspection um, I tell people to just concentrate on the life safety issues okay okay you don't like the blue you know the blue paint okay let's go to Lowe's okay let's find you some more paint change it yeah, yeah. you change it right. I mean that's a quick fix mm -hmm. but if it's something that has to deal with the electrical system or the mechanical system that's going to bring danger to you, you got a cracked heat exchanger, you know, that mm. you can wake up dead. So it, you gotta have those things fixed. So we go through that process and that's another time of negotiation between you, um, you and the seller. Mm. And we agents stand in between only because people get very emotional about stuff and we can kind of come down and go, oh, no, you know, you don't wanna say that. We need to think of this logically. So let's say we get through all of that they have an appraisal done, that's something you will have to pay for, and then you do a final walkthrough, usually 24 to 48 hours prior to the closing. You go through and make sure that those items that were on the home inspection that you asked them to do, that they agreed to do, were done, mm -hmm. okay? Then after that, it's time to go to the closing. So, those are the major, yeah, yeah, close it up. Circle it up. <laughs> Circle it up. So, so tell me this, uh, mm -hmm. because you know, I know our viewing audience would we we'll probably want to know if you, uh, you know, because the housing market is so limited, mm. you know, uh, the inventory is so low. Yes. Um, you find a house, you might want it. Do you think you want it? So you start the process, right? Mm. And then you think, I don't want it. Is <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying, you know, okay. is there is there any is there a a part of the process where you like don't go this far? Because once you go that far, you've gone too far, and now you're in. And you know, until they say they don't accept, you're in. You're on the hook. Is you, there a cut point? That is the cut point. Now, there was a time when you people would weasel out what I would say at the home inspection. Now, here, let me let me be clear. There are things in the whole house inspection that may okay. come up okay. that may say, oh my God, I had a situation where we found out that this house was on a hill, well, it was on a hill. The main beam that was holding up the house on the hill mm. had been eaten up by termites. Okay. Oh, so we don't want to go sliding down the hill. I mean, that was a deal breaker because it was going to take, what, Ten or fifteen thousand dollars or more. So that's the that's one of those conditionals. Yeah, but here's the thing: okay. people are using that to kind of well, we just back out. It's not so easy to back out these days. Okay. They have changed the contract. They just changed the contract. It used to be seven, uh, what was it? Seven pages. Now it's ten hmm. or eleven. Yeah, eleven pages. Okay. So that's why it's a legal binding contract. Mm -hmm. You need to make sure that you understand it. Mm -hmm. I go through it 
with my clients to make sure they understand. You understand? You want? You, know, you really want this? You need to make sure you sign it. You know. And so, right at that beginning stage, you are putting in an offer, or nowadays a bid, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> yeah. um, for this house that you think you're interested in. Correct. And upon the acceptance of your offer, mm -hmm. paperwork is starting to be drawn up. Or is it already? It's already in place. It's already in and place. And what we call it is the meeting of the minds. Okay. Anytime you change anything on a contract, yep. it is a counter offer. Got it. Okay. So if everybody is good with everything that's on there, that means we have a meeting of the minds and everybody has signed, you're off to the races. Okay. Got it. Now, people have let people out of contracts like, oh, if you lose your job, you know, those things have happened. Or someone has died, those things have happened. Yeah. But yeah, I've also seen, you know, and this is interesting to me, where a seller may find that they could get more money <clears throat> for the property because somebody came in at the last minute and said, Hey, you know, I'll I'll buy it for ten percent more or twenty percent more. But they're past the... Mm -hmm. Too bad, so sad. Too bad, so sad. Okay. <laughs> so you accepted the offer. You're, you're kind of stuck with it. Unless you use some unique loophole. Ain't no you. Don't do it. <laughs> okay. Don't do okay. it. Okay. Okay. So because it's, a, it's a decision. You're, it you're is at the a decision. De okay. Yeah, it. and that's the same way on the other side with the, with the buyer, too. Mm -hmm. You wake up one morning and say, oh, the sky is not quite the blue I was hoping for. That wasn't a contingency of the contract. I am so sorry. Okay. Yeah. So if you write it in, so some conditions in the in the beginning stage of yeah. the offer, the meeting of the minds, so to speak, you know, if I have pre-approval, if I have financing, mm -hmm. you know, we're still moving along. We're still moving you know, along. You know, but if there's anything, you know, the appraisal comes back and it's less than what you said, you know, can you write that in there? <laughs> Well, there is a clause that talks about the appraisal, and that's when, here's the thing, you get the appraisal, it's not just for your benefit, mm -hmm. it is for the bank, really, because the bank yep. says, okay, well, suppose you cannot, um, you can't pay your mortgage, mm -hmm. and they will foreclose on you. Well, the bank doesn't, the banks are not in the business of owning property, they're just not. So what they want to do is if they have to foreclose, they want to make sure that they can sell this on the open market. So if you overbid it and they said, you know, this, oh, it's appraised at this, and it's not the higher price, you can, your agent can on your behalf to go back and like, oh, we're not appraising at this price, so we need to renegotiate this price. Got it. Now. Because of the craziness of the market right now, I don't want to scare anybody, but it's, you know, this is Tell funny. them, tell them. I just need to let you know what's going on out there. Yeah, I mean, that's interesting. <clears throat> what happens is, what's been happening is people are waiving their appraisals mm. and bringing that extra money to the table. Mm. Now, you better make sure that's your toe tag house, because I don't know if you're going to get that money back. You know okay. what I'm saying? That's just my opinion. Okay. Now, I could be wrong, uh -huh. you know, because stranger things have happened. So... That's what people are waiving their appraisals. But we do have a Cobalt Bank, we do, and I'm sorry to tell them, I work with Cobalt Banker if you haven't figured it out. Anyway, so um, we do have a system in place where they can actually plug in the number mm -hmm. and they can kind of see if it will appraise. And so you do have a way out of saying, okay, we think this is gonna appraise, so then there you go, you should be safe. Okay. Yeah. So they're, they're buyer, so, seller, both. Yeah, are either one. Yeah, Got either it. one. Yeah. Okay. So okay. we have we have systems. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, systems. <laughs> well, you know, everybody, you know, everybody's know. putting skin in the game. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's um, it's wow, wow, west. But anyway, part of the buyer consultation. Let's go by you know each one of them. Mm -hmm. I'll ask you questions like this. Where do you want to live? How many bedrooms? How many bathrooms? How do you have to have a garage? If you don't have to have a garage, then can you do it with a carport? Do you have to have a two-car garage? You know, I start going through all of those things. You give me your wish list. Now, I know I got a big wish list, mm -hmm. but yeah. you may not be able to avoid a wish list. So, um, and I also need to know when you want to move. I need to know areas that you want to move, mm -hmm. or even if you can tell me areas like, 
I really don't want to live in this X, y, particular mm -hmm. area. Okay, that's fine. I can eliminate that. Now, the other thing is I need to know what your budget is. That's because we've gone and checked out how much we can afford, right? And then um, how do we start? What do we need? And like I said, you need money. You're going to have to have money, like a, an appraisal, maybe three or $400, just depending on the size of the house. You're going to have to have a whole house inspection, like I mentioned before. That could be three or $400. Um, I really don't know what the lead-based paint and the others are. But you, you're seeing you've got money that's coming out of, together. Out of pocket. Out of pocket. Exactly. Yeah, right, right, right. But you want those things done. Yep. And here's the other thing. Suppose you don't get the house. Well, suppose there is something that's wrong that, mm -hmm. like I told you about that beam, and mm -hmm. you know, you're like, mm, I'm not buying this house. You're going to start the process over again. Mm -hmm. So that means you may have to have double of right. these things. So you need to get that. So you're saying, well, how do I get started? I don't know how, you know, I don't have money right now. You have to plan. And there's a That's way to plan. This is all about. Yeah, but you can plan. Yes, yes, and I've got yes. some creative ideas for you to plan. Right. And I want to make sure I don't miss these things. And would you please read, read for me this Deuteronomy 8 and 18 for Let's me? Let's see if I can. I know you can find. I'll take these off. That's okay. So this, the word says in Deuteronomy 8, 18, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. For it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant. Right. Well, this is, I'm giving you some power to get some, mm -hmm. <laughs> to get, get the power, <laughs> sorry. Anyway, I want you to do this, and I don't like doing this, and my husband gets on me, but you know, whatever. Um, track your expenses for one month, every last thing you purchase, and see where you can cut back, okay? Um, we do a lot of mindless buying. Uh, I'm, I'm human, I do it too. Um, but you can start saving that money. Uh, one other thing, um, if you've got a significant other and there's a way that you guys can live off of one salary and squirrel away the other one, let's say for six months or a year, you would have the money for the down payment and all those things, okay? Um, and take an aggressive approach to just getting rid of your revolving debt, like credit cards and stuff like that. Um, there are two things of thought or two ways of dealing with that. Take the higher one, higher you know, interest rate, and start hitting it hard, hitting it hard, hitting it hard. You still pay the minimum on the other one. Yep. And then once that one's over, then you go to the next one, or you go to the smaller one, hit it hard, hit it hard, hit it hard, get that one out the way, because that will improve your, um, your um, loan amount that you can get. Um, when you think through that, you know, our, our financial planner who was sitting there mm -hmm. um, kind of touched this. Um, and so I'm going to tell people again, tune back in to last week. <laughs> yes. I think it was the 6th uh, or the 9th, I don't know. Anyway, um, when you think through financing, you know, we just kind of take the how you go about getting your money off the table, but kind of looking at dollars, like, are we talking hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands? To be All ready? depending, you know. Well, here's the thing. Um, I kind of broke down all the different, you know, inspections and stuff you're going to have to have. And also, you have to pay your insurance up front, too. Mm -hmm. So that's another hunk, and it depends on the house and what your coverage is. But the bigger thing is the down payment. Now, you can put down, you know, as low as 3%, uh, 5%, but you're going to be paying what they call private mortgage insurance because you haven't put down 20 percent that private mortgage insurance stays on that house and it could be you know, say oh it's only about you know fifty dollars or whatever it is but it adds up over a year and over years so but once you have 20 percent of equity in your house you can get that taken off mm -hmm. okay so Anybody out there that's got a house and they you see private mortgage insurance and you know I can do a market analysis on it and it'll say that you know because of the market has gone up, 
that you now own 20% equity in that house, you get that stuff taken off. They're supposed to take it off for you. Didn't always happen. But if you see it on there and you think you might be able to get rid of it, there yeah. you go. The reason why I said it is because mm -hmm. when, when people are looking at financing, it's type of, right? So mm -hmm. if it's, are you talking FHA, you're talking conventional, you're talking, you know. Well, conventional means 20%. 20%, okay. Okay, any of the other ones can be low, like 2.5. In fact, I believe with, um, mm, yeah, there's some FHA, FHA loans that you can do that, but you have to shop around because the rates uh, vary. They're supposed to go up a little bit. The feds have kind of told us, like, oh, you know, we got to cut this inflation down. You know, we got to do something. So, and for every, from what I understand, the rule of thumb is for every point you go up, mm -hmm. it reduces your lending power by $10,000. Got it. Yep. 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 So it's like, ooh. Now, uh, another thing you can do, if you know grandma wants you to have a house because you in her house and getting on her nerves with your cheerings, <laughs> then you can ask grandma or someone to give you a gift. It must be a gift. You have, that person would have to write a letter that is notarized usually that says, I am giving you this as a gift. It can't be a gift. It has mm -hmm. to be a gift. Okay. Okay. Document it. Document it. Okay. Exactly. Now, I got another plan for you. Okay. All righty. Okay, you ready to hear it? I'm ready. Okay, uh, could you do Romans four seventeen for me, please? Oh, we're, going, we're going back to the uh, scriptures. I'm going to scripture. Scripture. Uh, okay. Yeah. Romans four seventeen. Alrighty, it says, is it four seventeen? Yeah. Oh yeah, that we. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, as it is written, I have made the father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Okay, so what we're gonna do is call those things that be not as though they were, but here's the thing. You will have a plan though. You gotta have a plan, okay. gotta have a plan. Right. Now, would you agree with me? God is the Father. Absolutely. And his son is Jesus, right? Absolutely. Okay, well, and we are grafted into that family, correct? Correct. So Jesus is our big brother. Absolutely. Well then, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> this works out well. Okay. Someone told me, told Greg and I this um, some years ago when we were living in Denver. He proposed to us that since we had that relationship with God and, and Jesus was our big brother, we always tithed, okay? Well, since Jesus is our big brother, we can tithe to ourselves. <laughs> so you take 10% off the top for God, and you take another 10% because you, <laughs> he's my big brother. I can, and I'm part of the family. Yeah. I'm going to tithe to myself. So you're still living off of 80%. 80, 80 so if you find after you do this monthly thing and you find out that, oh, I can cut back that Starbucks or I can, you know, maybe I just need to buy a machine. I just do it at home, you know, whatever. You are tithing to yourself. If you will tithe the same 10 percent yourself, you'll be amazed how much money you get in the long run. Absolutely. So Absolutely. that's why I'm saying you got this relationship. We might as well use our relationship. These are principles. These yeah, are principles. Exactly, exactly. You know, Pastor started the series on, on plan and, uh, you know, we started it coming out of New Year's Eve going into the new year and plan again is purpose, mm -hmm. line up, act, name it. And, uh, you know, that, that whole process is, is literally a, it's a process, you know, right. but to understand that there's different elements, you know, I saw it on your paper here, mm -hmm. you had a plan, interesting, mm -hmm. right? And so, you know, as we're talking, and I, I don't want to run out of time, so I'm kind of fast forward a little bit here. Um, you know, when the buyer is doing a process, the seller is doing a process, and then there's a meeting of together, mind. right? Mm -hmm. um, if we flip the script over to the seller side, sure. you know, because I'm going to put on a hat where, you know, there are individuals right now who are really contemplating and thinking like, you know what, 
if my house is worth more than I bought it for, tremendously more potentially, mm -hmm. uh, this might be my time. Yes. Now, now, you know, caveat, and I want you to share this. Um, yeah, I'm going to talk to you about the seller part, but remember, unless you already have a place to live, <laughs> you got to move. You gotta move. <laughs> well, you got to have a plan again. Okay. All right. Here's the thing. Talk to us about the seller side. Well, okay, I will talk to, talk to you about the seller side. But, uh, we're going to put some stuff up later about okay. where you can get money if you're a VA sure. veteran and sure. stuff like that. No money down. There, There's places out there that you could actually get um they got the Ohio Realtor, um, excuse me, the heroes, the police officers, all that stuff, where you can put down uh, like 2.5%. So there are a lot of different things. So, and we'll let our folks know that, yeah. you know, uh, we'll have resources available. She will be a resource, Anita will be a resource, so we'll have her information. You may see it at the bottom of your screen, or uh, we can get in touch with the church and get in touch with Anita, and yep. she's open and willing to help. Yes, I am. Um, now, suppose, you're, <laughs> suppose you want to sell your house. There are a lot of different ways you can go by that. You can um, hire a realtor. Okay. Um, you can go with it. There are discounted brokers, but I will tell you, uh, they will do the job for you, but a lot of times you're on your own. I mean, they'll just put it in the MLS for a nominal fee, but you handle everything else. They it's a hands-off situation. And I, oh, you can just put a sign in your yard and hope somebody drive by it, but you still got to deal with all of it. Uh, you can be what we call a FISBO, which is a for sale by owner. A lot of people go on to Zillow and do that. Again, you're on your own. Uh, there are certain, um, what can I put, um, disclosures that you must have, whether you're a for sale by owner or not. They are main, mandated by the state, and so you got to have them. And uh, you can go online and get them. But I will say this, I mean, not everybody needs a realtor. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know some realtors are getting ready to just, you know, cock their guns yeah, and hit me yeah. right now, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? I mean, but a lot of people don't, yeah. you know, they don't, and that's fine. Um, but there's a lot out there that really need realtors, and that's why we are, we're here. We keep the emotion out of the situation, and we try to protect you. Also, uh, what we try to do is make sure that all the I's are dotted and all the T's are crossed. So if, if you think your house is worth something, let me do a market analysis. Those market analyses are free. Mm -hmm. I can do them. Um, I would have to see the house because your house may look beautiful on the outside. And I get in and it's like, okay, you know. And I don't mean to offend anybody. Mm -hmm. I don't want to offend anybody, but I just know what the market is asking for and if you want top dollar you that's need that's it that's what yeah if that. you want top dollar yeah. you've got to have some things in place yeah here's a scenario i you know i thought about a couple people on my street who have sold their house mm. right so house a sells for x house b sells for less than x mm -hmm. <laughs> and kind of wondering like well my house looks better than their house well maybe on the outside it does but this house has had all the updates. Yes. This house has the same things in it from 72. <laughs> <laughs> Both built in the same year. Oh, yeah. Oh, know, yeah. But this one has updates and this one does not. Has the I'm green a, shag, shag carpeting. I'm small yep. tile. I'm yep. Tile. Anyway. <laughs> But either way, I, I have a good... Because I know people want to max out. They yeah, really of course. It's like, you know, can I, I... This could be a windfall, so to speak. It could be. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing. that We have tools. We mm -hmm. have a lot of things. That's why we come in and take a look at it. Because you've got, like you said, some one that has the updates, one that doesn't. An appraiser's going to come in, like I told you before. The bank is going to make you have that appraiser come in. The appraiser does like a balance sheet. Mm -hmm. They will say, and I have a friend who is, an, who is uh, actually an appraiser, and she will tell me, she said, Anita, okay, well, this house has a fireplace. This one does not. We subtract so much out. Mm -hmm. It's a checks and balances. This one has beautiful hardwood floors. You got the green shag carpet over here. It's dated. They will subtract mm -hmm. from there. Okay. And I know people get mad, and there have been some situations where appraisers have done things that are not correct. Okay. And in any business, there are people that just will not behave. Okay, but that's what they do. It's a checks and balances of what is updated and what is not. 
Some houses that have completely updated, even on the auditor's site, they will say it was built in this year, but it was updated to this kind of standard for the for this year, which is in you know I got it. more yeah. recent. Yeah. So yeah, I mean there are different ways to do it. And one thing that we have um, at Coal Banker, and I you know I have to say that because mm. you know they get me paid. Uh, we have a thing called Real Vitalize, mm. where we will pay for you to have those updates done, hmm. not out of your pocket, we'll pay up to $40,000. Now don't get excited. Hmm. It all depends on what the price of the house is. Okay? Say it up to? Up, up <laughs> to, yeah, make sure you get that up to. Mm -hmm. May not be that, but you can get those items done. Mm -hmm. And what happens, we don't um, charge any interest or anything like that, but we are going to be a line item on the Alta sheet, the closing documents, where we get our money back. Got it. So we help you to get your top dollar. Mm -hmm. And it happened with another sorority sister. She had really worn carpet after she moved out. I found her another condo and everything. She moved out and it was just the carpet. I'm like, uh-uh, girl, we gotta do something about that. Got it fixed, done. Now, you wonder about people being homeless if they want to buy another house. Right. There is a company out there that we know about that will actually buy the house for you. You have to qualify. They will buy the house for you. So, so you, the house you're selling. No, 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 oh, no, no, no. The next house. The next oh, okay. house. The okay. next house. I'm glad you asked that mm -hmm. question. Yeah. The next house. They'll buy the new house for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's kind of like a lease with an option to buy. But you can, uh, you, can, um, you can actually buy it the day after you close if you want to. But that allows you to move out, put your house on the market, get your house sold, take the equity out of that house, and then bam, look, I want to buy this house. Come on out. Hmm. And there's nice very, strategy. yes, it is. There are some fees, but they're really not that much. I mean, it all depends. But yeah, there's a company that will actually do that for you. Hmm. And we also have people that can do, you know, construction loans. If you buy something that needs some help, uh, you can get a construction loan uh, to get that work done. That's awesome. Yeah, that, it is. Awesome. I, mean, I was like, what? Okay. So there are ways to do it. So when we, um, you know, we'll have to land the plane here. <laughs> um, <laughs> when you think about the whole picture, you know, real estate is, it's, to me, it's just a wonderful area if you have understanding yes. um, and it can work out to your advantage mm -hmm. not only of course just having a home but you can invest and you know oh absolutely you can make money they said it's a it's one of the avenues for wealth building you know i know yes. you guys talk about that at Coldwell banker but it's an avenue of wealth building that some of our folks kind of miss out on um and some don't know that they can do this you know you know i just want to build some encouragement mm. to the viewership those who are tuning in that have thought about this for 10 years five years mm. two years three years however long and said you know i'm, I'm really tired of paying rent and if i totaled up all my rent i bought at least one house if yeah. not two houses but yeah. you know i want to move into that arena um you know, what would you say to just encourage people, you know, just give them some words to, to encourage them that they can do it. It might take some effort, but, you know, yeah. just in your own words. You just can do it. Here's the thing. <laughs> what I've encouraged people to do is to, if you want to have a house and you want to be, get into it, it is possible. You can buy a two family, four family, okay? Live in one and you get the rents from the others. And most lenders will let you count, if you have the leases in mm -hmm. place, let you count part of that, a percentage of that, as income. Mm -hmm. The big thing I tell folks though, you have to have a strong um, countenance about this, and I'm gonna tell you why. You have to be, and don't take me, don't take, take this wrong. You have to be so strong because people will give you a sob story and I can't pay my rent. No, no, no. This mm -hmm. is business. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I've told my clients, don't even tell them that you own the property. Just say, I I'm just a maintenance person because they'll be knocking on your door mm -hmm. at three o'clock in the morning. You don't need all that grief. 
You know, you really don't. So there are ways to protect yourself, you know, get an LLC or some kind of C-Corp or whatever you want to do to protect yourself legally. Like I said, I'm not a lawyer, but that's when you need to yeah. talk to a lawyer. Absolutely. You know, but you can build a lot of wealth. There was a guy, um, he's, a, he's a fire chief now. That's exactly what he did. Hmm. He bought a four family and he lived in one and he rented out the others. Now, while he was living in the one, he updated that one. Then he moved to the next one. He switched it out mm. and he raised the rent and he went all the way through. Updated. Updated. He still, is, yeah, he still owns the property. I think I checked. And then he bought himself a bigger house. It can be done, but you can't do it overnight. Absolutely. Absolutely. But you can do it. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, um, each of the folks we've had here shared you know, kind of from a kingdom perspective, and I always say, you know, kingdom is beyond the walls of the church. Mm. You know, we physically look around and there's limitations of these walls. <laughs> and, um, but God is so much greater, so much bigger than what we see. The scriptures that you gave for me to read shares the, the magnitude and the magnificence of the God that we serve. And just thinking back, you know, just real briefly, think about, you know, just your, your kingdom purpose in doing what you do today. You do real estate. Mm -hmm. If you think about it from a kingdom driven purpose, how is that, how does that affect you? How, what has pushed you in that area? Well, you know what? There to any job is a love hate relationship, mm -hmm. but the thing I enjoy is seeing the guy that was the firefighter, now the chief, and he's got these, these properties. Mm -hmm. I've got uh, some brothers that are from New Jersey. And um, one brother brought a four family, another one bought another one. Uh, now, oh, and a cousin bought something. And now they bought it when the market was low. Mm -hmm. And now their properties are worth so much more. Mm -hmm. And I also like it to see, I, I, lo I love to see when people are just happy to get in that new house. They, mm -hmm. There was a young lady that's at our church, that's in, actually in the choir, never owned a home, you know? But just the excitement of like, I'm gonna put the bed here, I'm gonna do this over here, and I'm gonna paint this wall, I'm gonna do this. I remember when Greg and I got our first house. Yeah. And it's an excitement about it. And you should be excited because instead of just handing over a check every, every month to a landlord, you are actually paying part of that house down. You can paint the walls whatever color you want. You can put the, if you want to, you know, have your music on late at night, there's nobody beside you to tell you like, stop that noise or whatever. Well, if you get too loud, you know, your other neighbors will do it. But still at the same time, it's, you know, it's yours. You're building equity. You can write off the, um, the uh, interest exactly. on that. Yep. So it, it, it helps you to build more wealth. Now, I, uh, I advocate people to try to pay it off as soon as possible. And, oh, there's another thing too. Let me tell you this. Let's say your, your, your um, house payment is $1,000. People, when you see that, that loan information, it says by the time you get done, you've paid this much. The way to get around that is pay a little extra every month. Now you have to be careful that you don't have a prepayment penalty, right. but just pay a little bit more. Right, right. You can write a separate check that says apply to principal only, and you'll own the house faster. Absolutely. I mean, it's a no brainer. Just thankful again that you would come out and share with us. And I know there's a couple other things you want to say, and then we're gonna kind of summarize here. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to say, if any of you out there wanted to know more information, like you said before, you can get in contact with me. Uh, tell, selling a house has 13 steps, and you know I've got those up, and we can uh, share those with That's you. Awesome. Also, years years ago, I started writing a book on how to buy a house, and I've got a I got my copy here from way back when, 
but I have other books that if someone would like to uh, get a hold of them, please let me know. I don't have the buyer one with me, but I have one if you want to become a sale, for sale by owner, if you have an inherited home, you don't know what you want to do with that, or you had your house on the market and it didn't sell. I've got a book on that. So um, just let me know. Absolutely. Let me know how I can help. Absolutely. Right. Again, you've been so helpful. <laughs> and I hope and pray our viewing audience has been able to glean something from what's been shared. But God is so good. He is doing a great thing in this season. I'm so excited and so happy that we've been able to share during this hour, during this time. And I pray and hope that you get something and you'll share it with someone else. In the meantime, shalom. The sign you don't go in the streets, babe.